Hi, uh, my name is uh, Kuljit Singh. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Gold Coast, Australia. Today, we'll be discussing how to reduce the conduction abnormalities and reducing the pacemaker rate in TAVI implantation. I have with me my two uh, friends and colleagues, two senior interventional cardiologists, Dr. Anthony Kamuglia from Brisbane, Australia, and uh, Dr. Ganesh Manoran from Belfast. And we'll be discussing today, uh, Dr. Kamuglia will discuss about the cusp overlap technique as a way to reduce the permanent pacemaker implantation. And Dr. Manoran will first discuss about the frame alignment technique as one of the other ways of reducing the conduction abnormalities, uh, followed by the 30-day uh, outcome, specifically looking at the implantation of pacemaker with this specific technique. Uh, TAVI is now a, a default uh, strategy for intermediate high-risk patients, but has been now accepted for low-risk patients uh, in US and has been um, a proper alternative for such patients. In the last decade, um, the major vascular and cardiac complications have reduced significantly when we look at the vascular complication, uh, analyst rupture, wire perforation. However, permanent pacemaker uh, implantation still remains uh, one of the uh, issue which is still found depending on what valve you use from 5% to 20% of the patients undergoing TAVI implantation. As we go towards low risk patients, we really need to reduce the permanent pacemaker uh, rate in these patients. And with these new techniques, uh, we'll learn today how we can achieve that successfully. Uh, from here, I'll hand over to Dr. Kamuglia for his presentation. Thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Singh. It's great to see you. It's also great to see uh, Dr. Manaharan. Um, I'm from uh, the University of Queensland, Australia, and we'll be talking about the cusp overlay technique. Now, as TAVI operators cannot have escaped having heard about the cusp overlay technique and the potential ability to use the technique to reduce pacemaker rates, attain higher implant heights without complications, and reduce paravalvular leak in addition to reductions in conduction abnormalities. The basics of the technique involve using it, the CT that is our bread and butter as TAVA operators and moving away from the traditional three cusp view and overlapping the insertion points of the left and right coronary cusps on the right hand side of screen and translating that into a fluoroscopic image and using the non-coronary cusp as the lowest part of the annulus as really the anchor of what we work around to deploy our TAVI prostheses. The mechanics of the technique then are fairly stepwise and can be used as a reliable reproducible recipe in most patients. Even in patients with vertical annulus or a horizontal aorta, especially with the Navator system, uh, formerly the portico system, uh, which has excellent deliverability, uh, significant flexibility to navigate uh, tortuous anatomy. Uh, we begin uh, where we want, want to end up. So we begin high in the annulus and using an ario portal type projection that we've calculated for the seat from the CT, which is normally our cusp overlap projection. We commence deployment. We can use slow controlled deployment with the Navator system because of the intraannular leaflet design and the early leaflet functionality so that the device can be deployed carefully for stable hemodynamics. And then we maintain that cusp overlap projection as we deploy the valve while at the same time maintaining alignment of the bottom of the valve frame. And this allows us to attain an implant height that is fluoroscopically and anatomically higher than we were able to achieve in the past using the traditional three cusp view. The cusp overlap technique allows us to elongate the left ventricular outflow tract and remove foreshortening calculation error that was inherent in the three cusp view. Of course, there's still the ability to complement the two views together to end with a final implant high 
that is two to three millimeters below the lowest point of the annulus with minimal power of alveolar leak and avoidance of pacemaker insertion. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction and Anthony again for a very uh, succinct uh, explanation of the, of the cusp overlay technique. I'm going to introduce to you a new way of deploying uh, a device, a self explained device. I've been doing this for five years now, but I've kind of homed into a technique called the frame alignment technique to uh, optimize deployment depth and outcome. Uh, the frame alignment technique, uh, unlike other techniques, does not require pre procedural CT for analysis. It's real time assessment of depth by referencing to the frame in relation to the pigtail and the non coin sinus. It can be used for any anatomy. Uh, it can be used for any self explained device, and it can be used for any access. So we start off with a case. Uh, first of all, pre dilatation performed. I'm using a Navator 25 valve with an 80 millimeter pneumo nucleus balloon. We then advance the valve, uh, in this case, up to an LEO 32 angulation. Position the valve just above the sinus, start releasing the valve, and align the inflow portion of the frame to be coplanar. And you check your position, you can see that it's about two to three millimeters depth. And I'm now going from LAO32 to LAO36. There's no caudal cranial tilt when you're doing the LAO technique, uh, the frame alignment technique. The other important part of the technique is also gently lift the nose cone of the pigtail by gently withdrawing the stiff wire. And that then reduces the interaction nose cone to the LBOT and minimizing further trauma to the left bundle. You then keep going, uh, releasing the valve. I'm now going to LAO 36 uh, to align the frame. And from one third, uh, at one third, you can see I'm now at LAO 44. Depth is maintained about two, three millimeters. You take an angiogram and check the position. You then go from one third to two thirds under rapid pacing. Align your frame again and check your position. The depth looks good at the two thirds, about three, three to four millimeters, both in the non-coronary and the left coronary. Now, the important part of this technique is then you go to an ario caudal angulation. Again, align your frame. I've gone to ario 9 caudal 49 to align the frame. Take an angiogram, confirm the depth. Happy with the depth, go back to the previous LEO angulation, release the valve under application again, realign the frame, and this time to LEO 25 to realign the frame. Take an angiogram, you can see that the Navator is fully expanded, uh, equidistance both in the left coronary and the non coronary, no leak. This patient went home the next day with no conduction changes uh, and no complications. So, to summarize, then, the steps are very simple. You position the pigtail in the non coronary sinus, you advance the valve, the annulus, start releasing the valve, constantly aligning the inflow portion of the frame to be coplanar, but only in the alley of view. You reference it to the pigtail on release and rapid pace during one third to two thirds and rapid pace on full release. Always double check in another position. Uh, the area caudal position is what I use. Again, align to the frame and you get uh, reproducible depth uh, on both sides with good results. So, with that, I'm going to stop and uh, over to you again, Kuda. Thank you for uh, sharing your techniques. Now, we'll see the uh, 30 day outcomes of the Navitor system. Uh, with the frame alignment techniques by Dr. Manoran. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to now uh, show you the next generation Abbott valve called the Navator valve. Uh, and I'm going to sh share with you data that was presented at uh, EuroPCR uh, 30 day outcome. The Navator valve uh, has all the benefits for the portico device, large frame, self expanding, resheathable, but it has now a uh, integrated seal zone with an active cuff that is designed to mitigate PVL. It was investigated in the Portico NG study in three regions, US, Europe, and Australia, and the European and Australian data set were presented at EuroPCR. 120 patient data cases were shown, average age of 83 years old, all were high risk or extreme risk patients. And at 30 days, you can see that the overall procedure risk success based on WAC definition was 97.5%, with no procedural depth, no conversion to surgery, and uh, all patients receiving a valve. Importantly, uh, as I've already mentioned, there was no death for 30 days. Disabling stroke was very low at 0.8%. Major vascular complication was exceedingly low at 0.8% using the flex and delivery system. However, the new pacemaker rate, again, despite the new technology, was 15%. This is why I think why uh, both Anthony and I have shown you other techniques and improving uh, pacemaker rate. 
Uh, importantly, the hemodynamics data from the Navito is excellent with mean gains at 30 days of 7.4 millimeters of mercury and an EOA of 2 centimeters squared, with the vast majority of patients, over 80% of patients, having none or trace PVL at 30 days. So you can see that the Navator technology has certainly pushed the boundaries. So you're getting excellent results at 30 days uh, with low uh, PVL uh, rates and great hemodynamics. Uh, with that, I will now hand over back to Project. A very nice discussion of uh, two somewhat different but somewhat related techniques, which essentially makes the operator confident where they're deploying is really where they're deploying. Uh, what I take from both the techniques is that you are not very high, but you're confident that in these two different projections uh, that you are at a fixed distance, only two to three millimeter under uh, the non-coronary cusp. My first question is to Anthony. Uh, most of this data from the cusp overlap, I've seen US is from uh, more from Avalute. How applicable this is to the new Navitor system? Kuljit, thank you for the question. The cusp overlay technique really just translates something that we already know about anatomy, that the left ventricular outflow tract can be foreshortened when we're looking at the heart from an LAO cortal point of view, and that usually when we come RAO cortal, it's elongated, and it allows us to get more height. The Navitor valve, as we've seen from the data that Ganesh presented, really ushers in an exciting new piece of technology that has complication rates really better than anything we've seen from the major TAVR vendors in the past. And if we can integrate some of these techniques like the cusp overlay technique and the frame uh, technique that Ganesh has explained to us tonight, which I'm gonna eagerly go back and watch over and over again and adapt into my practice, we're really looking at a device that has minimal complications and potentially very low rates of pacemaker implant. That's great. And Dr. Manoran, what's your experience? You've been doing this technique now for some time. Would you like to share some of your own uh, data with us? Uh, thank you, Roger. So um, I've been using frame alignment technique for nearly five years, but uh, from 1st of September last year till now, I've been consecutively collecting consecutive patients. And of 91 patients, uh, I had one pacemaker. Uh, I think that, and that's using any self-expanding, any anatomy. Uh, and I think it's a technique that can be very easily learned, very easily taught. It doesn't need expertise in CT because it, it treats the patient real time as you see them. Uh, and uh, hopefully with both these techniques you've seen today, we will be able to improve uh, pacemaker rates for all our TAVI patients. I would like to thank both Dr. Manoran and Dr. Kamuglia and all the uh, audience for this uh, webinar today. There were two fantastic techniques to essentially reduce the permanent pacemaker rate with self-expanding valve system in low intermediate risk patients. And a combination of the two techniques uh, will be very uh, valuable uh, in your real life uh, population. Thank you.